Okay, so this is just a, a little video lesson, if you like, um, just introducing the seven concepts in geography. Some of them you're probably already familiar with, but for the, for the purpose of, of our subject this year, this semester, we're going to just have a, a little refresher on these seven concepts. I'm hoping at the end of the semester that you'll know these off by heart. Shouldn't take too long, there's only seven. And so the concepts as we know them are listed right here. As you can see, place, space, environment, interconnection, sustainability, scale, and change. These are the seven concepts. Some of them we might look at together, depending on the task that we're doing. Others we might pay a little bit more of a particular focus on, depending on where we want to go with them. So the first concept I want to talk to you about today is place. Now when we think about place, we really are thinking about those areas or locations on the surface of the earth that actually provide meaning to people. Right? It could be a country, it could be a city, it could be a school, it could be a hospital, it could be a bedroom. So no, no matter what place we, we are talking about, um, we have to look at, have a look at the meaning it has to people. The second concept I want to talk about is space. Now, when we think about space, when people think about it, often they might think, oh well, space isn't that like the wide universe when we're talking about space. Um, yes, to some people, I think maybe that's how they picture it. And fair enough, but for geography and for geographers, we like to look at it in a little bit more of a different way. We look at how things are arranged and, and organised on the surface of the earth. And when we talk about space, that's what we're talking about. It has three main elements. Location, spatial distribution and organisation. So location, you know, where, where things are situated or located on the earth. Um, spatial distribution, how? How are they arranged? Um, is there a pattern to it? An organisation goes one step further by looking at how and why things might be arranged or situated or located the way they are. Now the third concept I want to talk about is environment. Now there are lots of environments that exist on the planet, um, but we could probably put all of the environments into two broad categories, natural and human. Now when we talk about the natural environment, so talking about things like deserts, like mountains, uh, seas, rivers, um, all those sorts of uh, our environments that have been largely untouched by human activity. Now a lot of uh, environments on the earth have been so affected by human activity that um, very few of their natural features remain. We refer to these environments as the human environments or the built environments and these include things like um, uh, cities, towns, suburbs, agricultural regions and you find that in these regions soil, plants, animal life have all been affected uh, but not only that a lot of these environments can also affect the climate. Have a look at New York as an example. Now New York being one of the biggest cities um, in the world um, has its own microclimate. Um, it'll often probably be a few degrees hotter uh, than the surrounding areas because of the concrete in the buildings. And they, they do a lot to trap the sun's heat. So you'll find that in a lot of those built up uh, regions around the world that there are some significant effects that take place, not just on those physical aspects um, on the earth, such as the soil, plants and animals, but also in the atmosphere. And that's an important thing to remember when we talk about environment and we look at that as a concept. The no thing on earth exists in isolation um, and that brings me to my next concept which is interconnection. Now when we talk about interconnection it seems pretty straightforward. Um, we are really looking at how, how things uh, on, the, on the planet actually start connecting to each other. Now, geographers use the concept of interconnection to better understand those links between the natural and the human processes that shape our Earth. We've already talked about the natural and human environments, and so this is a really good place to, to, to look at and think about 
this whole concept of interconnection. What is it that uh, affects the natural environment that might be as a result of human activity? What is it that affects the human environments as a result of natural processes that occur? So you can see that already we're looking at a couple of concepts that do relate quite closely to each other. And most of these concepts do, but this is a prime example. Now the next concept is one that gets a bit of attention and that's the concept of sustainability. Now this is a word that has become very popular in recent times um, but I often ask myself do I understand what it actually means? This whole notion of sustainability. I used to think of it in terms of you know the, the ability that we have as humans to sustain our own lives. But I've probably grown in my understanding of that definition by understanding for myself that it's not just about the capacity that we have to sustain human life, but the capacity that we have as humans to sustain all life. And I think that's an important thing to, to get our heads around. We can look at things like uh, energy sources as an example. Um, the renewable energy sources like wind and water that uh, are used in many places around the world to provide energy for, for people. Or we can look at it in terms of the non-renewable resources, and those that we are chipping away and never replacing because we can't. Once we use them, they're gone. And so the sustainable practices are really are looking at those practices that are going to give, as I mentioned before, not just a sustenance for, for human life, but a sustenance for all life around the planet. One of the things geographers like to do uh, is undertake inquiries and a key part of undertaking any inquiry is to understand the scale at which you're undertaking it. So for example, you might want to study something on a very small scale, but in another situation you might want to study it on a very large scale. So to give you some examples um, of the different scales that you, uh, geographers might like to undertake an inquiry, um, if they were taking um, a, a study on a local scale, there might be the, how many people attend a certain skate park in Hobart. Um, if they were looking at a, a regional level study, they might think, okay, how many uh, tourist numbers did Tasmania receive in year, last year? Okay. Um, on a national level, it could be something like um, having uh, an inquiry into how many tourists are visiting all the national parks across the country. Um, on an international level it could be looking at things like um, poaching in certain African nations and because many of these nations might be together and have the same issue that, that covers a, goes, goes across international borders. And finally you might have something or study something on a global level. Um, uh, for example like an inquiry into not just you know, national parks in one country, but national parks around the whole world, and having a look at some of the issues and key issues that affect all of those national parks. So that's just an example of why scale as a concept is important to geographers and how they might be able to use it. Now the concept of change is a very important one in geography. It helps us understand a little bit more about the processes that go on in the earth and help us to see it as a dynamic place. And that's important, that we understand that it is always changing. Over millions of years, the Earth has been shaped by a lot of natural forces. We can look at things like earthquakes and volcanoes, storms, uh, massive climate changes, and we get an understanding of those, those natural forces. But that's not to discount, obviously, a lot of the changes that have taken place as a result of human activities. Um, and, and the things that, that humans do to, to affect some of those aspects of, of the natural world, such as climate, as we've already mentioned in another concept. But it serves as a stark reminder when you see things like tsunamis and earthquakes and volcanic eruptions and how they can actually impact severely on many human populations around the world. And so it's important to track those changes and understand uh, why they're important and how best we can deal with them in the future. So that's just a very brief overview of the seven concepts. Um, I do hope that you come to learn them very quickly. There's only seven, 
and I have found in the past that many students have learned them very quickly because there are only a few. Um, so make sure that you, you go through this video, understand a little bit more as what I was telling you about, look at the examples, uh, and just keep in mind that the, st the study of geography is really the study of the world around us. And if we can come to understand how these concepts fit in um, to that study, then it's going to be to our benefit.